Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let Freedom Cha-Ching. A special day, I'm here with my normal co-host, Alex Asta, but I, we're also joined by Sebastian Franco, uh, our first ever guest. So welcome, Sebastian. How are you doing? We're doing good. Yeah, we, we normally do, uh, me and Alex just talking about talking about our feelings and about the, the week's Airbnb thing. So this will be fun to get a, a new person on and get their perspective on, you know, what they've done in the and their Airbnb career and, and where they're going. So definitely excited to have you on. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And I appreciate the, uh, the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. So f for you guys who don't know, Sebastian, pretty cool story. And we're, we're really excited about where he's in the Airbnb space. Cause it's an area that people are really hyper-focused on, but originally Sebastian, correct me wrong, your journey, your first introduced into the Airbnb world around 2019, uh, but you know, you're a student athlete full time. I'd love to. What sport were you in, by the way? I was actually a college rodeo, so pretty rare sport. Oh, that's Bigger pretty cool. In Texas, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing about being, you know, full time student is uh, I was either in class studying, well, a little bit of studying, uh, a little bit of homework, and then practice. So I didn't have time for a regular job, and that's when I came across the idea of getting into Airbnbs. And I was like, okay, this might work for me. Does not a whole lot of time once you get everything started. And then obviously at that time in that market, it was really easy to slap something up and then do great, which is exactly what happened. Now, granted, it's a very different market today, but that was my first taste into the short-term rental world. That's uh, that's awesome. And ready for this, I did just have a, a newborn. So here comes the dad. The dad joke was loading as you're speaking. When did you decide to grab the bull by the horns and really go... Full bore Airbnb. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that, that wasn't until about 2022, 2023 time. Okay. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier and one of your specialties is, you know, revenue management uh, or you got, you got really focused into revenue management, and, which is obviously, you know, for people that don't know uh, in the Airbnb space, if you want to be a pro, you have to get a good system, a good, you know, ecosystem of revenue management things going on, whether it be manual or dynamic pricing. So, uh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely dive into that, but is there, you know, anything else you wanted to give as a quick intro to, to your, you know, what you got going on and, and where you're at? Yeah. So, um, just kind of like prefacing how I got into it back in like 2022, I started working for a, uh, a company that educates hosts on how to boost their bookings, boost their revenue. Um, and that's where I really learned my my craft and what I was going to take into the market. Granted, I was let go. I didn't have my numbers, so, you know, boo-hoo. But while I was there, I was like, okay, I'm going to learn as much as possible. And then when I did get let go, I kind of just said, okay, well, time to take this into the market myself. And I started managing and then, you know, had great results doing that. And then I'm still managing my original clients today, and now I'm pivoting into um, – helping other hosts, educating them, and trying to teach them the skills that they need to maximize their revenue and profitability. Awesome. How, what's, your, what, what's your portfolio size right now? What do you got up to? It's pretty small, honestly. I'm only about a seven at the moment. So are those, those seven units, are those all uh, like management slash co-host deals, or are you doing arbitrage as well? So a few of them are co-host like management and then i'm just now getting into some rental arbitrage and obviously in the future i would like to you know purchase real estate you know do those types of deals have an exit mm -hmm. strategy yeah, yeah i think bigger profit that's kind of what you know our model that we go through the framework we follow is you start you can start with arbitrage if you have nothing right you can start with arbitrage because the risk is on you and it's relatively low cost. You can negotiate some front end lease concessions and get furniture on the cheap from people that are getting out of there and be game. Cut your teeth, earn super host, and then you're marketable as a co-host to people. And then you can scale as much as you want, as much as you're willing to, you know, get on the phone and, and ring them up. And then, yeah, it eventually affords the opportunity to invest in real estate and find like a killer uh, Airbnb property that or kill a property that will crush as a long-term rental, but will like de demolish as an Airbnb. And then, yeah, now you're building generational wealth. So I think that's a good, definitely a, a sound strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. And that would knock seven properties because we were, we were talking about this the other day and we tell people all the time, the difference between the average American salary is like around 59 K and the average studio to one bedroom Airbnb unit, like nets, 1500 to two K profit a month. So it's like, you need like three to five of those to replace the average American salary. So, I mean, I think, you know, 
it's 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 by no means a small feat and there's really not much difference between seven and 25 except that you have a virtual assistant that's getting hammered with more messages from guests asking if they can check in three hours early yeah no kidding better on them that the va than you know on you so <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a uh yeah it's there's there's definitely a little bit of a balance but you know and i've heard different people say you know for oh you have a va they can handle x number of properties and and certainly they're you know, you could find some VAs that are better than others, no doubt. Uh, but yeah, I, I think there, that's that's true. There's not that much of a difference when you start surf scaling. It's just going to be a matter of having the right systems in place to make sure that uh, questions are getting answered. Uh, they have the VAs have the answers to the questions and all that stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of it is really setting those VAs up for success. So as a as an operator, um, as an owner. Are you documenting everything that needs to be documented? Systems, processes, where is this located? Who do I call in the event of the AC going out, of a hole popping up in the wall? Really, this is the simple things that are going to allow you to step away, kind of spend time doing what you want to be doing during your day, and then allowing your VA to handle the rest. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's building SOP. It's building your SOPs out. Why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you want to have another full-time job? Well, guess what? If you go from a nine to five to Airbnb and you're not doing it the right way, it quickly becomes a, a nine to forever. It's a nonstop 365 and it's the busiest during your weekends. So it's like, yeah, you got You hit the nail on the head. You got to get SOPs dialed in and you got to get people that work for you to understand what they need to do and then empower them to make decisions and give them a risk threshold where, you know, as long as it stays under this amount, you can handle it. If it gets above this, let me know. And then, yeah, and then you find yourself, you know, maybe golfing more or, or riding bulls. I don't know if you, I don't know if people usually <laughs> do that, you know, like, I don't know if you go out with the boys on a Saturday for a nice round. Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally, but yeah, you know, spending time more, more time with your family, your kids, you know, taking them out to dinner more. I mean, that's, that's what this is all about, you know, giving you that time back and yeah, yeah. building that wealth. Do you have, you have a, do you have a wife and kids? I do not at the moment. I hope to. I sure hope to in the future. But that you're you're postured to enter that grind phase of absolutely getting after it. That way, by the time you do, you're not uh, you're not you know <laughs> pulling all nighters and being a zombie in the morning. Oh yeah, and then props to the people that you know do this. You know they start these side hustles with you know children and families. And I don't know how they do it. I don't. I'll answer for George in, uh, in a brief way. Uh, yeah, I don't know how George does it either because he does do that and uh, he's somehow operates on, you know, two and a half to three hours of sleep a night, uh, maybe less sometimes. I don't know. I don't know how the hell he does pop, that. Man. I pop some of these bad boys in and I uh, <laughs> and a lot of caffeine. Uh, yeah, a few monsters, a few Red Bulls. Yeah, I try. I tried to move away from the, the energy drinks. I'll just go to... Uh, I'll just do espressos and uh, yeah, I'll just do a lot of coffee. I, I have like like 13 plus cups of coffee a day. So that's whatever healthy. gets you by. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's alarming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's not sustainable, but Hey, whatever, you know, now's the time. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's cool though, man. I, I, uh, I like it. It's always fun when we talk to uh, other hosts that have been, that do it professionally because you see the stories may, they might be a little bit different in the origin stories and all that, but you, they kind of converge on each other with, especially with like the tactics of how to actually run the business. Like there's only, you're only going to be successful if you figure out some of these big picture things and make it go uh, the way that it needs to go. So it's definitely cool to hear that. And it's always a good sanity check to say like, hey, you know what? You need to do these things. You need to build these teams. You, there is hard work in the beginning, but the goal is to eventually have that freedom. That That's why you start it. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw something about how the average Airbnb only makes about $900 a year or something like that, yeah. which is what? absolutely yeah. crazy. And then, you know, if, if you're in these Facebook groups with other Airbnb hosts, you see it all the time. You know, you see people trying to get out of the business, you know, they're, they're tired of it. Maybe they're not hitting their numbers. They want to, you know, sell everything for cheap. And, you know, if, if, if we could get to those people and educate them on how to, you know, boost their, their bookings and their revenue, they don't have to get out. So, yeah, no, it's, you're, you're accurate. There's, there's like a, I'll bend it into a few categories. There's the people that really want to succeed and just, don't know how those are the people that you can reach. And then there's the people that are 
like on the new flavor of whatever side hustle every month. And they're like, yeah, Airbnb is dead, but NFTs are where it's at. So I'm going to dump 10K into that and then we'll go from there. But the people that want it, man, yeah, we can reach, you know, part of why we're doing this is to reach them and be like, hey, there are ways, there, there are ways to come around and recover and get back on top. And it's sometimes it's, it's, it's easy to us because we see it. To them, they have no idea, but it's as simple as like, why is there a canted angled picture of your bathroom as your hero photo with bad lighting? Like, why is that? Yeah. Why is the bathroom your first photo? Uh, and it's like, you know, the copywriting is like, is, is bizarre. It's like a Zillow listing from like three years ago. That's their Airbnb thing. Or uh, their pricing is like $90 a, a night uh and 95 on the weekends and that's the price all year round and it's like everyone else around you is going for 150 bucks a night what are you doing and you know it's funny so like even just yesterday i was looking at a uh like a listing property for sale on like realtor.com and you're scrolling through these properties and you can even on you know properties for sale you still see that same level of effort that some of some airbnb hosts are putting into their listing where it's like the hero picture is awful they either don't have captions or all no cap, you know, bad captions, but their pictures are terrible. You see the same thing on houses for sale where the listing agent is like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'm not going to bother, you know, staging everything and making it look nice. I'm not going to bother having it cleaned and having a professional photographer go there. I'm just going to go in there real quick, take a few iPhone pictures and not bother if uh, cleaning off the lens of my, my camera and just, you know, see it's, I feel like in a lot of different industries, you will see that same level. There will always be people that take things very seriously and are, you know, consummate professionals. And there will always be people that don't and people that just like, eh, that's good enough. You know? Yeah, absolutely. What's been crazy to me is that learning that a lot of the same principles that we learn, you know, to, to really maximize your business here in the short term middle space, they're universal, which is really cool. Cause if you get it down in this industry, I mean, you could probably, move to another industry down the road and exactly do yeah. fairly well hit too and then another thing is um, which obviously this principle is super important in this industry but you get out what you put in you like what you were saying about um, you know poor quality photos not really caring not even small things like not preparing your property to be shown like as in for sale condition you just you know slap a picture in the bathroom nothing in there right. nothing on the counters okay show like soap for example show um towels being laid out it's right. small things like that attention to detail obviously yep. exactly like, yeah. as we know in airbnb like the no one wants it's about showing not necessarily the space but like the vibe of the space like what are the what is the guest going to be doing in there yes we get it there's a couch but like the guest doesn't care about your couch because they're not buying your property they're caring about what they're doing in the room show the games show like people out like have this stuff but yeah i mean you you, you once again hit the nail on the head. And then on top of that, I think there's a there's another piece of the puzzle here that is an intangible. And it's what I believe is like one of the precursors to success, which is like unsurmountable amount of grit and grit, you know, a person's grit and desire to push through stuff is that there. that's the I think that's a precursor to success. For instance, we'll look at, you know, you're doing your sales job. Some people would take that and be like, nope, um, man, that's an L chalk. Like, I'm going to just whatever. I'm going to go work at the grocery store. I don't know, insert whatever, you know, feel bad for yourself thing. And you decide to take that spin into a positive and push through and use the stuff that you learned and build on that. So I'm curious, like, what were the, what were the, the concepts, the key concepts that you learned there that you're like, you know what, I've learned this from here. I can take this, this stuff here. I know this is some of that, that special sauce. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go do my own thing. Yeah. So Really, I'd say there's three major parts that go into, you know, uh, revenue optimization, listing optimization, really maximizing the performance of your listing. And then I'd, I'd even say, you know, forward the bonus part, but I'll get to that. Uh, number one is going to be listing optimization. And that's like, okay, your pictures, is it professional photography or the at least iPhone photography? Are you staging in your pictures? Title, is it written well? Or the, the SEO, not the SEO, but um, like the copy. Is your description just one big jumbled paragraph? Is it clear, concise, you know, jot dots maybe? Who are you trying to sell to? Uh, that's that's number one. Number two is gonna be marketing, which is more of like, okay, who really appreciates your listing? 
who's leaving the five star reviews? Do they have kids? Are they traveling professionals, remote workers? And once you figure out who that is, how do we target them? So what do we need to say in the title and the description to grab their attention and pull them into our listing? Or um, how's our cover photo going to grab their attention? The first five photos, right? That's, that's another big key to it all. And then third, I'd say is pricing. Like you had mentioned earlier, George, is your, are you just charging $95 per night? You know, maybe 90 on the weekdays. What are you basing your prices off of? We can't just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope that it sticks in regards to this. We got to have some kind of semi-formal approach to how are you going to make money? Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. And, and uh, you know, like we've talked about, uh, Alex and myself on this before, pricing mm -hmm. is like one of those things where people get wrapped around the axle on pricing. And that's because it is like the one, it's like the, it's a science and an art form. I was talking to Alex about yesterday. So like, Yes, you have, we have the science part of it, like the rules, like we know occupancy based pricing, the reduce the percentage, increase it, whatever. And as it gets closer and you have your wickets and like people vary on what they, how conservative or aggressive they want to be. And you have your pricing software. I don't do you use a pricing software. Yes, I use price labs, <laughs> I'm not affiliated, but yeah. I've, I've tried, um, I think beyond pricing before it was cheap to start, you know, they, they charge 1% of each booking, but I mean, if you get to a certain point, you're paying more than you would be a price lab so yeah we we started with wheelhouse and then we moved to price labs and we moved to price labs because it actually ends up becoming uh i think the cost there ends up being a little bit over time but the they work with you a little more and also we met the price labs leadership at a wealth conference so like we talked to oh, them awesome. yeah like talk to the guys that run like the guy the ceo and it was like, all right, cool. And he like pulled up the stuff and worked through a listing example. And we're like, you know what? I'm gonna roll the dice on this. And uh, one of our mentors uses Price Labs, and they kind of walk through how they use Price Labs and like rule sets and stuff. So we kind of use that as the the skeleton of what our revenue management strategy became. Yeah, it's it's a healthy mix of knowing okay, the, just the basics, base price, uh, minimum price, minimum night stays, and then you. Once you learn that, then you can kind of play around and say, okay, uh, how how much gradual percentage increase do I want to do over time? How about the adjacent factors? You know, learning the intricacies of the uh, price labs and the customizations. And then before we kind of move on in the conversation, one thing I kind of left out, which is uh, it's not one of the keys that I learned at that previous job, but I think it's absolutely crucial. And that's tracking, you know, using an Excel spreadsheet, putting down your revenue your expenses, track everything you can about the business. Because if, you, if you're not tracking and you see one thing's changing, you, you don't know exactly know what's causing that change and what you need to be doing moving forward to affect these changes. So Yeah, that, there's a, someone once put where, like, where attention goes, money flows. Uh, but yeah, you, you're right. Like tracking, we, we have a few, I think that's a part of the revenue management thing is tracking and then KPIs for your business. It's like, okay, yeah, we track, you track these things. We go through it every Friday. This is what we're tracking. Uh, these are the numbers, uh, more so because you want to have a pulse on what's going on. And, and when you met you, other than that is shooting shots, uh, shooting, shooting shots in the dark. And, uh, if you don't know where you're measuring, then, you know, you, you could be doing good or you could be doing bad. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we start off for a while. It took us about two years to get a bookkeeper. <laughs> And, then, and so it took, we got out, we were in the like, just, just freaking go. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll burn it down and whatever happens happens, but you got to be a little more smart because that money that you, let's say you're losing, even if it's like 750 bucks a month to something that is pointless or, you know, that you don't need, or there's a way to trim it down. That money could be a few months that could be a new unit. Uh, so it's just, you're hindering your ability to scale. Yeah, no, Absolutely. that's a good that's a good tip for everyone that make sure they're tracking their stuff. And that's applicable to everything. Revenue management, you know, the reviews going through and weight doing... loss, you know, getting outside of, you know, short term rentals. But yeah, you, you track something what you, what you track improves. So. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You can go work out and and you're like, Why am I not losing weight? Well, it's because you're you're uh, you're eating like thirty Snickers a week. That's why. <laughs> it's right there. It's all the Snickers. Not to bash Snickers, but Sorry, I've, I've, I've lost. <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, with the pricing, yeah, it's like measuring that stuff, like you said. And then for us, uh, we we took a shift to 
you have all these softwares, which are very important, but you also have Airbnb as a platform and Airbnb is like any other social media platform as I'm learning about social media, which is like Instagram likes you to edit on Instagram. And when you edit your videos on Instagram, they push it better and it has more reach. Well, Airbnb likes you to use Airbnb tools and their revenue management tools. And when you do that, it gives you bonuses in there. So we, we couple, you know, Price Labs with Airbnb and using the discounts that you can go on and research like, hey, at this point, Airbnb rewards this amount of discount by doing this. So we, we kind of tweak and fudge things to take the, to get both of those. Have you, have you tried something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting that you bring that up. Obviously, in, in Airbnb hosts left and right talk about you need to be changing your listing all the time, changing your prices manually. True, Airbnb prefers that you're messing with your listing so often, but with the pricing, price labs and other dynamic pricing tools are going to be doing that regardless. So that's covered. And then in regards to discounts, one of the little uh, tricks that I do is, you know, say, I'll put a discount for two night stays, three night stays, stay started at like 3%. And then the next night, four night stays, 5%, you know, and so on and so forth, up to about, you know, seven nights and then two week, month long discounts. And then what that sees is it kind of gets into a, it gets into the sales psychology side of things. So when they're looking on Airbnb, they see that slash through the original yep. price and is to have a new price. Um, and then obviously don't just take the hit, you know, adjust your base price higher so that you're making the way that you still want to make but one of those small things that definitely helps out yeah that, that that's it. it's a huge psychological game right because people love everyone wants to get a deal everyone wants to think they're getting a great deal it's like hey honey look come on this place is 30 percent off let's book it right now okay great they're happy you're happy you know and it's and and maybe they don't know the difference right they just it and it shows up better in their results because it's it's a deal it's a discount right uh so it's that's kind of a, a you know a daily fun game you know you can always make adjustments and and things so yeah and then especially yeah going from we had earlier uh, earlier this year or late last year had a pretty pretty quick growth from you know like something like six or seven units to 11 units and then uh so there's just uh, there's a lot of discounts flowing, but it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a fun, fun. The way I couch it to people is like people look at like, oh, you're just taking advantage of people and they don't know that it's not as like, no, no, no. Like the actual re the root is you have your software and you have your what it should be priced at to in accordance with the market. It's a fair price. You just increase it and set and slash it so they can appreciate the price that it should be, because if you just tell one. It's hard to explain to a guest, no, no, really, this is the best price I can do. They're like, no, no, you can do more. It's like, no, I can't eat into my, eat into the salary of the people I pay to help work in the business. Like we, we pay for other people. You can't explain that to someone over an Airbnb DM. So it's just easier to be like, hey, make them feel like they're getting the value that they are getting uh, that other people just don't put the time and effort in doing. So it's just a quick, easy way for you to, sh to show them that they are getting the value uh, by create like perception and then knowing that it's not like a bad, you know, practice. You're not scamming people out of money. You're just helping them see the value that is already there that, you know. Yeah, abs absolutely. And then, I mean, sometimes they get lucky. I have, uh, you know, if, if a property is still unbooked, you know, seven days out, 14 days out, I start doing a gradual um, percentage decrease in the price. So sometimes they'll snag a really great deal. I'm okay with that because it's still unbooked. And that's revenue I would have missed anyway. If we, you know, went empty, and they obviously win big time because you know sometimes it's low as like thirty five, thirty seven dollars a night just on a, on a nightly. And obviously there's still cleaning fees and taxes and all that, but um, it can be a win win. Yeah, a hundred percent. So what's your what what are you looking at now? Where's the what are the next steps? Are definitely going to be more into educating and helping people as much as I can. In regards to like the number of people, how many people can I educate? How many people can I, you know, boost their help, boost their revenue, their occupancy? Um, that way they allow, you know, more time and more revenue for themselves to go play with the kids, go on vacation, extra date nights. One quick question that I wanted to touch on for y'all is, what are y'all's takes on omnipresence in the business? Are y'all present on other platforms? As far as OTAs? Yes. Yeah. We, yes, we... 
our original strategy was, and we still kind of recommend this to people is when you start off and you get one like master Airbnb, crush Airbnb, and then move on. But the market is changing. Uh, and now it's like a good example is Google. <laughs> I don't know if you're tracking like the Google OTA, that's going to quickly do not dominate because people are just going to Google, Hey, I'm looking for a rental and whatever. And then Google is going to be like, yep, go to this. Uh, and Airbnb will, you know, have a, ma a major competition with them. So yeah, we do now uh, recommend going out. There's, and we, I don't know if you use a property management software. Yes, so I use a uh, hospitable. You know, okay. it just makes everything easy. It's another thing I'd recommend for you know a lot of hosts out there. Yeah, we we use Guesty, but they're all like like all these things. They're all they all have their their pros and cons, but they pretty much all do the same thing. We we found that on our PMS, it has like there's hundreds of OTAs, like very niche OTAs. And that's where I would say, hey, if you're in a market that's a super niche market and it fits that OTA, and that's where like 80% of that comes from, like, yeah, go, go. Like that comes into the market research and competitor analysis. You need to know where you're at. You need to know the avatar that you're going. So to answer your question, yes, we believe in uh, utilizing other OTAs. And I think Google will probably start taking lunch so if you're not tracking that, get get on board. Uh, but and then the big one is like everyone talks to you, the race to direct booking. Like I think that's the goal, uh, and that's that next level uh, zone of thinking where you create web websites and social media platforms for all of your properties, and then they all have their own booking thing and a funnel that goes to that property, and you reward uh, direct bookings, and eventually you get to the point where you're you know over fifty percent direct bookings, and now you have your own business. Uh, that is independent from any OTA. Yeah, that's obviously the holy grail of what you want to go to. It's definitely not what I start with, you know, when, when I'm talking to new people. Yeah. So right. now it's like, okay, you, you got, you know, 5% occupancy month to month. Let's let's get some people oh in God. the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get some people, like, yeah, get people in. Like, you, you could get by with Airbnb. You could get by with Airbnb, especially if you're brand new, especially a 5% occupancy. But yeah, you can go, you can hit the big ones. But yeah, no, obviously, uh, direct booking is a, that's a whole nother beast in itself. Oh yeah. Whole other conversation. Yeah. Or how about you? I'm assuming you're, I'm assuming you, you know, when you, when you meet new people, do you advise them to, uh, you know, do you have a few OTAs that you're, you're big on that you believe or make up the core market? I'm sure we have yeah. some thoughts there. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I recommend, I kind of differentiate from like the master of Airbnb um, side of things. I say, okay, let's, Obviously, let's hone in the marketing. Who are we marketing to? Make sure you optimize your listing. Once that's done, let's take this to verbobooking.com as well, the big three. And then obviously, there's just little intricacies that go along with that. Okay, let's make sure the calendars are all synced properly so we don't have any big errors. But you know, we're still getting the benefits of the omnipresence and the bigger reach. Yeah, and that definitely, definitely makes sense. Uh, we... We found, uh, like you mentioned, you know, when you do good market research, you can see where the bookings are coming from in the market, and each market is different. And uh, we have there's a there's a threshold where if it is you know above this Airbnb or whatever the OTA is, for instance, like in out in Virginia where we have some new cabins coming up, Verbo is just more popular because people book the cabins on Verbo by this Airbnb you prioritize, we just prioritize the one, help people get spun up and then go on. But I love that. I love that as well. Uh, definitely, definitely the cool thing at least I think about Airbnb or STR in general is there's more than one way to skin the cat and, and be, and find success. It's just about, you know, like you said, like getting a system down and doing it and then crushing and then also being flexible and willing to adapt and understand that something that worked for you six months ago might not be the strategy today. Definitely won't be the strategy probably in another six months. Absolutely. You know, the way to stay on top of that is to, you know, listen to podcasts like this. So make sure you're staying up to date on you know, the latest industry knowledge. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I think, and I think you, that's one of those things you can also apply to anywhere. You know, Sebastian, like you said earlier, like with coaching and consulting, you know, if you can, you know, through starting with Airbnb or whatever industry you're in, if you get if you become very good at coaching, then you can apply these business principles. You can apply things you've learned to other people in other industries, right? 
Um, so the same kind of thing goes here. Like as long as you have the ability to adapt to new situations and you're flexible and you're not so rigid in your thoughts and in the way you do things, as the markets change, as the demands change and clients may change, as long as you can adapt with that, you'll be able to still be profitable. Absolutely. You know, there's a, I think there's a saying in uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War, be like water. You know, business is like war sometimes. You got to, you know, be flexible, be willing to move with the ebbs and flows and, you know, take the hits. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I love the way of thinking there. That's, that's, that's the only way you're going to be able to maintain success. Uh, you know, we, a personal philosophy I have is you're either growing, there's no stagnant. You can't maintain. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. And you just choose what direction you want to go in. Uh, there's no holding ground. Uh, that's just not how life works. You're either making moves or you're retreating. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that. How about, you know, as we start talking about, you know, helping other people stand up to date with industry knowledge, do you do you have any uh, any socials or stuff? We'll, we'll link them below or, or anything that you do to help kind of inform people. Yeah, so I'd say, you know, first off, if you're, you know, interested in learning more um, and how I work with others, reach out to me, um, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, even Instagram. The the social I'm most active on in regards to STR is definitely LinkedIn. So I'd say that's the number one place to uh, to reach me. All right. Awesome. And then, uh, you know, you, you just joined uh, Airbnb Superhost Academy. So uh, hopefully, you know, on there, if people for the people that are on there, if, if you're on there, DM Sebastian on there as well. And, uh, and then you can reach out to him there or hit him up on LinkedIn. And then hopefully, you know, we can have more of these and uh, we'll post this in that in that community as well. Get some celeb shots for you on the revenue management or different stuff there. So uh, definitely excited to have you join and the, the experience that you uh, bring to the community is definitely appreciated and valued from Alex and myself. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to, you know, helping some others. It'd also be really cool to start having some people on that have actually gone through the changes, you know, have get their perspective. Okay. What was it like to take your unit from five hundred dollars one month to, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty five hundred dollars the next month? Oh 60 yeah. Sixty days later. Yeah, these aren't numbers I'm just pulling out of my butt. I was actually looking at some of my original units, you know, performance when I first started. It's anywhere from six hundred dollars one month to 1950 the next or over three months two months um, you know 3x over 3x changes in revenue so this it's totally possible but you just have to you know like we said be learning have an open mind and then be willing to try things out and deviate from what you have been doing yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Yep. stay stay flexible uh, and be ready to be ready to adapt to the market because Airbnb changes all the time and the OTAs change all the time and the industry as a whole uh, changes and with you know with from from the legal standpoint and having other flexible response options like doing MTRs or uh, you know zoning things to be savvy so yeah you always need to be on top of ways to adapt to whatever it be whether it's all the way from the market to geopolitics all the way down to just the little nuances like your individual listing. So very good advice. And yeah, like Sebastian said, you know, hit him up on LinkedIn if you want to, if you want to connect and uh, you know, we'll definitely have you on again. I, I, I love talking to you and I think we would, I'd love to go over some case studies of people um, try and pull out some stuff to help give people some actionable things there, some first few steps. So Sebastian, thanks again. It was awesome having you and we look forward to talking to you later. I appreciate being on here. Yeah, pleasure talking to y'all. Cool. Thanks again.